Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a, a great joy that is to be able to say that. Um, I know it's not a shock to our members, but that brings tears to my eyes. Uh, even though we have this small group, we know that confession of faith to be true. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Uh, that means this pandemic and all the difficulties of our lives are not the final word, but rather the resurrection is. Not just of Christ, but ours one day too when Jesus returns. We rejoice in that always. We welcome all of those who are watching, both our members and our non-members. We pray uh, that today, as in the past days, that you will be fed with the Word of God and that you will grow in faith toward our Lord and in love to your neighbors. We also want to thank you all who have been sending in your offerings. It's been a blessing. It helps us to keep balance, to have things come up, uh, as things come up, to be able to make the payments that are still necessary, even if we're not able to gather in worship. Uh, I also do have an announcement to make about our Branching Out uh, initiative and what's going on with that. Uh, branching Out, uh, you know, it's completed the big part, but we have the remodel of the classrooms on the east side. We were hoping to have that done this summer. Uh, that's not going to happen uh, for any number of reasons, the chief of which right now is the COVID-19 virus. But we have, are submitting our application for the permits to the state of Michigan. Normally that's a three to six week time period. Uh, it's going to be stretched out as the state has actually laid off the permit people at this time. Uh, what that means is we're delayed and, and we're okay with that. We can figure things out and work around that uh, if, whenever that time comes. Once the permits are given, we have a year on those permits. So we have plenty of time to get this done in a good manner. Um, it also means that we haven't put out the bids yet because bids generally go out for 30 days. And once the 30 days are up, they would have to be rebid. If you re ask people to rebid repeatedly, or even even once, uh, that shows a lack of seriousness in the, in the builders and the contractors' mind. And so we're playing this very well. We've been very blessed to have great leadership on this in our congregation from uh, Kevin Przinski and Jeff Davis and Jeremiah Hayner. Uh, they have really stepped up, and, and their wisdom and understanding have really helped us. Uh, at this time, uh, we invite you now to, to get ready for our uh, worship as we listen to our prelude.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel the prophet writes, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, do you know? Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the epistles from 1 John chapter 5. St. John writes, For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If you receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he is born concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hands and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of Jesus, amen. On the first Easter, the disciples were afraid. They were afraid that what had happened to Jesus would happen to them. Would they be arrested? Would they be falsely accused? Would they be mocked and tortured and crucified? They were afraid, and in some sense, understandably so. But of all days to be afraid of death, on Easter, how could they be afraid on Easter? Earlier that same day, Christ had broke forth from his tomb victorious. Our Lord had emerged immortal, which is to say he's now incapable of dying. Jesus had not just risen to continue existence like we experience. Rather, he had risen as the first fruits of a new existence, raised to eternal life, raised never to die again, in a state of being where death cannot even touch him. You see, friends, Jesus had conquered the foe that same very day. Jesus had crushed the serpent's head, which means the war is over. Ding dong, the witch is dead. It's time to celebrate. It's time to throw a ticker tape parade and shout, long live the king. But instead, we find the disciples hiding in fear. Now, pastor, you may say, pastor, that's because they didn't know yet. They didn't know about the resurrection. Ah, uh, but they did. And indulge me just a bit as I describe all the reasons why they knew. First, they should at least have known because the Old Testament had prophesied it. As we read in Ezekiel, and faithful Jews believed in resurrection. But even putting that aside, they should have known because Jesus had told them repeatedly. He had told them that he would go to Jerusalem and be betrayed and die and on the third day rise. But if you remember, the first time Peter rebuked him for saying this, and the other times they were busy arguing who is the greatest. But that's not all. They should have also known because Jesus prophesied the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah was in the fish for three days, so must the Son of Man be in the earth for three days. Jesus had also told his opponents, destroy this temple, I'll rebuild it in three days, referring to his body. Jesus had also said, no one takes my life from me. I have the authority to lay down my life. I have the authority to take it up again. This I have for my father. And a few days earlier, on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus had told them, I am going to prepare a place for you, and then I'll come back again. A little while, a little while I will, you will not see me, and then after just a little while, you will see me again. Therefore, let your hearts not be troubled. Do not be afraid. But that's not all. For the women who had found the tomb empty and who had seen the angel, these women had reported to them that he was risen. Mary Magdalene saw Jesus alive and she had reported that he is risen. And if, even if you dismiss the women, we know from other passages that Jesus had appeared to Peter and Peter was in the room. And finally, just before our text, the two disciples from the road to Emmaus would have arrived, and they would have reported that he is risen. So they knew, and yet they're hiding, and they're afraid, afraid that death is coming for them. And I must say, if I were Jesus, I would have lost my patience with these men. 
I would have given them a piece of my mind. But here's the joy of this day. When Jesus comes, what does he say? He says, peace be with you. And he's so very gentle. And he shows them his scars, and again he says, peace be with you. And then a week later with Thomas, who had said some nasty things, he said to Thomas, peace be with you. Peace is a relationship word. It means wholeness. It means that there's nothing standing between us. And what Jesus is trying to convey is that the relationship is restored. He speaks these words of forgiveness into their lives filled with fear. How marvelous. How marvelous it is to know that Jesus forgives me for all of my silly fears. That Jesus forgives me when I am weak and struggling with faith. That Jesus forgives for the doubting of his promises and for all of our many other pathetic weaknesses and our sin. And he enters our lives and he speaks a word of peace. You know, the text says that the men were hiding for fear of the Jews. But if anything, they should have been fearing Jesus. Think about this. One of them had betrayed him. Of course, he wasn't there anymore. They had all abandoned him. Peter had denied knowing him, even though Jesus had warned, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. And then Thomas had doubted. If anything, they should have feared Jesus. You see, the real fear of death is the fear of sin, the fear of being judged. And if anything, they should have feared God's righteous judgment, for they were sinners, these evil, ungrateful, idiotic, unbelieving men. But what does Jesus say? Peace be with you. Yes, peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. And not only does Jesus forgive them, but then he also authorizes them to go out and to preach this message of peace to others, to forgive sins. You see, the message of peace was not for them alone. So Jesus gives them his Holy Spirit so that they might become peacemakers, preachers of the gospel and of his forgiveness. He gives them the Spirit so that they can absolve sins as Pastor Smith did this very morning. He authorizes them to use water, saying, go baptize all nations, and whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. And he gives us the blood in Holy Communion. And he sends them out and he authorizes them to forgive because he knew you'd be here 2,000 years later. And he knew that you would need the message of peace as well. Friend, are we ever like those disciples on the first Easter? Are we ever scared? Scared of death? One way to think about the fear of death is that the fear of death is the fear of losing things. It's the fear that everything is temporary, that nothing lasts, that all decays. And the current crisis has reminded us that we have these fears. Even if you don't fear that you will die from COVID, this crisis has perhaps revealed to you that you do fear the loss of certain things. We fear the loss of experiences. I know a lot of high school seniors that mourn the loss of their senior year of sports or their senior prom 
which they will never get back. The idea that those things were once in a lifetime and we have missed out. We fear the loss of income, the loss of our livelihood. We fear the loss of loved ones. I know as a child, my greatest fear was losing my parents. We fear the loss of relationships. We fear loneliness. And more than anything, perhaps we fear that we're losing time. That time just keeps slipping away. This is all the fear of death. You see, if you believe that you only live once, that means everything is limited and you're running out of all of it. Not just running out of toilet paper, you're running out of everything. You're running out of money, you're running out of experiences, you're running out of loved ones, you're running out of health, and more than anything, you're running out of time. If this life is all there is, fear will dominate you. Thoughts of fear will run the show. But how silly would it be for Christians to be afraid, especially while celebrating Easter? Do you not know what has happened? Well, of course you know. Friends, our Jesus has conquered death. We have discovered that our dear Lord can even undo death. And if that's true, there's nothing to fear. Friend, you can't lose money. You can't lose it. For you have eternal riches guaranteed. You can't lose out on experiences. The best experiences you will ever have will be after Christ returns. You can't run out of loved ones, for your family in eternity is described as a multitude that no one can number from all tribes and peoples and languages. You can't run out of health, for he who is your head is risen. And it's only a matter of time before you also rise. And friend, you can't run out of time. C.S. Lewis describes this at the end of the series, The Chronicles of Narnia. Those stories are about these four children and all their adventures in this world and in Narnia. And at last, the books, it's time for them to die and go to heaven. And the series ends with this paragraph. The things that began to happen after that were so great and so beautiful that I cannot write them. For us, this is the end of all the stories, and we can most truly say that they lived happily ever after, but for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were about to begin chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has yet read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. What a beautiful way to think about life. Life is a book, and the time you have now is only the cover page, perhaps the preface. But your actual story doesn't even begin until you reach eternity. And as long as you have Christ, you can never lose out on anything, for the real adventure hasn't even yet begun. Now, that being said, if there is something to fear, it's that you would not make it. If there is anything to fear, it's Jesus himself. It's judgment day. 
for you are a sinner. And there will be some who hear on that great day, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. You see, our fear has been misplaced. Ah, but Easter even takes away this fear. For when Jesus comes to us, what does he say? He says, peace be with you. And in those words, all fear is gone. If sins are forgiven, there is nothing to fear, and you will have eternal life. Friends, this is the joy of a Christian, the joy found in the water of baptism and in the absolution and in the gospel and in the supper. It is the joy of being forgiven. For if we have forgiveness, there will be nothing to fear. If God is for us, who can be against us? God has justified us. Who is left to condemn? Jesus, right now, is at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no fear. Therefore, friends, rejoice. Rejoice, for death is undone. Rejoice, for sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be at peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that your Son has died and raised, been raised from the dead, that all fear may be cast out. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would grant us your Spirit, that the Spirit who comes through Christ brings a spirit, not a timidity, but rather one that embraces the gifts of this life and in a life to come. Grant that we, as we face the trials and troubles of this day, might to know that there is more to come and that this is just the prologue for the greatest story. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our fellow Christians, both here and throughout the world, that they might be kept safe from the dangers of this life and this time, that you might be with those who are part of the persecuted church, that they might not that they may not lose faith as they look to suffering even death on the behalf of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and ill, especially those who have been attacked by the COVID-19 virus, that they might not lose hope, but might remember that they are still in your hand. Grant healing as you see fit to all, and that all hope in your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those serving to help and protect us in these times of need, 
We pray for our police officers, EMTs, firefighters, all others who may be first responders, that they may be kept safe not only from the dangers that come to them in the form of physical violence, but also in the course of disease and confrontation with it. Grant that they might be at peace as well as their loved ones. Be with those serving in the military around the world, that they might indeed remember their calling is from you and serve to protect those under their charge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our church body, for President Harrison and President Meyer, that you might grant them wisdom as they lead us in these times which are um, unparalleled in our lives. We pray for the leaders of our nation, for President Trump and Governor Whitmer, that by your goodness they might be granted wisdom and understanding, that they might have good counsel, and they might lead people not in fear or in ignorance, but rather do it, lead us, so that we might be prepared to fight the challenges we face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that in this time of isolation, your word might still go forth powerfully, that those who hear us on the internet and through other devices, by your grace, might be moved to a greater faith and confess your son Jesus in a time of fear, that they might live with the boldness of knowing that though we are isolated, we belong to you, and your son is always with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Thank you.